Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. What is going on with my brain that I can't do something I know is good and maybe even life-saving? Well, it turns out to be complicated, but also revealing. So every day I take, or at least am supposed to take, three pills. One to lower my cholesterol, and two to help me manage OCD and depression. They are good pills, the side effects are manageable, and yet many days it feels like I am climbing a mountain as I try to take them. I have to cajole myself into taking them. I find reasons to skip days. I have at various times stop taking these pills entirely, even though I understand that they are literally life-saving for me. So what gives? Well, first off, failure to take medication appropriately is a huge problem. Like, something like 50% of prescriptions for chronic conditions are not taken as prescribed. And this so-called patient non-compliance contributes to over 125,000 deaths per year just in the United States. That's about as many people as die from murder and diabetes combined. So one of the biggest factors here is cost. In the U.S. and many other countries, people simply can't afford to take their medication as prescribed, which I would argue is not patient non-compliance so much as it's medical unaffordability. Like, we often blame individuals for what are actually failures of human-built systems, and I think this is a great example of that. Like, if you don't have money to take your statin every day, you're not going to take it. And if half of all patients are struggling to take their medication as prescribed, surely we can't blame individual people for what is clearly a, a broader problem. Like, in this I am not alone. But cost can't be the whole story, because even in countries where medication is free, so-called patient non-compliance is still incredibly common. Researchers have identified about 80 different factors that lead to people not being able to take their medication, from forgetfulness to the size of the pills being so big that they're hard to swallow. But many of the major barriers to so-called patient adherence are psychological, which is great for me because I, I already have psychological problems. Like, you know, it can be psychologically hard to take a pill when you feel fine. How many of us have not taken the sixth and seventh day of our seven-day antibiotic course? This is especially profound with the world's deadliest infectious disease, tuberculosis, because, you know, everything is tuberculosis. When diagnosed and treated appropriately, many people with TB begin to feel better within a couple weeks of their antibiotic treatment, and within a month they may feel absolutely fine, but you have to take the pills for four to six months, maybe even longer. We're talking about hundreds of pills, sometimes over a thousand pills. Now, even though many patients feel fine for much of that time, you need to take the pills as prescribed in order to maximize your chance of cure and minimize your chance that the infection will come roaring back with drug resistance. But while you're supposed to be taking these pills every day, not not only do you feel fine, the medicine makes you feel worse because there are side effects. So you may stop taking the medication, especially if you don't have a ton of trust in the healthcare system, because you feel okay, and in fact the medicine kind of makes you feel bad. Now something similar is happening on a much different scale with my cholesterol medication, right? Because I feel fine. I don't feel like I'm about to have a heart attack, even though I know intellectually that the statin lowers my chances of having a heart attack, or indeed dying, I still struggle to take it because I feel okay. And that's in a world where I can afford the medication no problem, and also the side effects are basically non-existent. Then there's another important factor, stigma. Many factors in our culture tell us that we are healthiest when we don't take medicine, and that in fact the healthiest people don't take any medicine. Being without medicine is seen as being in a natural state, while being with medicine is seen as an unnatural one, and the natural state is seen as more desirable. This is especially true for medicines that address health concerns that are heavily stigmatized, like type 2 diabetes or certain mental health conditions. And I've wrestled over the years with the idea of needing to take psychiatric meds in order to be myself, when being myself should be like me in my natural, unmedicated state. But here's the thing, Hank. It is true that it's unnatural for me to be free from the psychic pain of OCD and depression, just like it's unnatural for me to be free from physical pain when I take an Advil. But I would submit that natural, despite its contemporary connotations is not actually what we're going for as a species, right? Like, it's natural for about half of children to die before the age of five. It's natural for people to die of polio and smallpox and to be infected with bovine tuberculosis by drinking raw cow milk. We don't want to live in a natural world. We want to live in a world where healthcare conditions can be effectively and affordably treated using a wide array of tools. All of which is just to say that I do need to take my medication every day in order to become myself 
And that's okay. Another significant risk factor for non-adherence is depression itself, which is a problem for me because the more I don't take my depression medication, the more depressed I become, which makes it harder to take my depression medication. Patients might also mistrust the advice they've received from their healthcare provider. They might fear side effects, or many different factors might overlap, making it very difficult to take medication. So what works? Well, researchers have investigated everything from fancy pill bottles that tell you the last time they were opened to the kind of pill boxes that I use, and uh, none of that works. I mean, the pill box works for me, but data is not the plural of anecdote, and when it comes to the data we have, nothing really works, except for habit tracking. This is where you tie taking your medication to something that you do every day. Like, for instance, if you have to take pills in the morning and at night, you might tie it to brushing your teeth. So you put the pill boxes right near where you brush your teeth every morning and night, and then you have a visual cue to take your meds. If you need to take your medicine with food in the morning, you put it by where you make breakfast, etc. But even with habit tracking or whatever other strategies you use, taking your meds can be hard work. You're overcoming 80 risk factors every time you do it. Sometimes I judge myself for struggling to take my medication. I mean, it could not be easier for me. I have fewer risk factors than almost anyone because I trust my healthcare system, I have good insurance, etc, etc. But it helps me a bit to know, one, I'm not alone, and two, this thing that seems like it should be easy is in fact hard not just for me, but for many people. But three, while it is hard work, it's still work worth doing. So that's my takeaway, Hank. It isn't easy to take these medicines, but if I tie it to a habit, it becomes easier, and regardless, the work is worth doing. Hank, I'll see you on Friday.